Okay, so there it is, the door's finished and the front of the shop, I'm really pleased with it. Absolutely over the moon. It's, having, it's so nice, it's having a real door on the shop. So really pleased with it. My wife's painted the wall for me, so that sort of tidied that up. I've got a tiny bit of trim to do, but other than that, it's basically done. So good actually having a nice door to enter when you come into the shop and into work. Much better than stumbling around with a stable door, which is really cold. I've done quite an in-depth build on this, even though it's not a very uh, fine piece of furniture and it's just a, an oak door, quite simple. I thought you'd be interested in seeing how it was put together and the processes. It's going to be quite in-depth, so it's not too short. Um, if you want even more detail, there will be three parts on my Patreon page if you really want to see every part of it. But don't worry, there's plenty of detail on the YouTube one as always. I'll try and show you every part of the process. It was quite a long process because I milled all the wood myself and the door is made from laminated oak. So two pieces of oak with a join. If you look carefully there, you can see. I did that for stability and just to keep the overall thickness of the door. I think it's about 38 mil this door. I wanted to keep the weight down. The glass weighs around 27 kilos. So here we go. Hope you enjoy it.
Okay, so the uh, polyurethane cleanup, I'll just show you the process. Wait until it's completely dry, and then with a sharp chisel, you just cut it off. So it's not too bad. Now it will need sanding because what I've discovered, um, if you've not used this before, what I've seen is that I'm not gonna finish this door, I'm gonna let it age, it's just because it's oak. But what will happen is this part here with the urethane won't age, so you'll notice it. So it will need to be sanded right back anyway. So, you may ask why I've decided to go right through with the pegs. And it's not really for any sort of structure. And probably, in terms of weatherproofing, I probably shouldn't have gone through, but I actually just like the look of it. I'm gonna put the kind of bars on the front of this. And I just like the look of those old doors, the old peg jointed doors, the 17th century doors. So that's the reason that I've gone right through with the holes, not for any other reason. and. Uh, I'm sure it's not the right thing to do, but I just like the look. So for the weather strip on the new workshop door, I'm going to use this system and it works on the basis of a rebate and then a sort of second rebate here. Or you can buy a router bit, but they're quite pricey. I think a good one in the UK is about £60 uh, and you can get them as cheap as about 35 but obviously won't last very long. I don't do this very often, so I've simply set my spindle molder, or you could do it with a saw or another router bit, to do the groove, which is 13 mil. And then over here, I've just got, similar to a biscuit cutter, I think this is a 2.2, 2.3 thickness, and then I've done a second cut to give me the groove. So just two passes, pretty simple. Just gotta do that to the whole frame now. Okay, so I've just set up a story stick, um, spaced it out where it's coming in, marked for the hinge on each of these tabs, and then I can transfer that to the door frame and should be good to go. And you can see the results of this little template. You can use it with square hinges and just nip that out, but I don't mind my workshops putting these round ones on, really easy, nice and quick. And I just find it's much neater than using a chisel and much quicker. Okay, so with this frame, we've got to remember that we're coming in here with this rebate so it's from there where the door will hang. Okay, so that worked really well. The story stick and that new little jig, really clean and fast. You can see how that lines up. All those hinges just fit in perfectly. So I want to the next step, just fix the frame and then we can hang the door on the hinges. So another real help is I've got one of these um, Axminster center uh, finding drills. 
Really good. This one works with the Festool, so it's really quick. A little tip here, the hinge with the slot here, you can see, line that up on your door frame. So that bit onto the door. With this jig, to be honest, you can just push it hard against the wood. It's perfectly lined up. tight fit so I've got a bit of a DIY uh, jig here I couldn't find a jig for fitting these locks unless it was a really expensive trend one and I don't do many locks so I just made this one quickly Okay, so I've chiseled out all the waste and from the drilling. Now I'm going to drop that in and I'm going to reset the router to now go down to the next level for the actual lock. So a neat little tip for getting the key lined up uh, is put it, line it up where you're going to do it and mark it as normal and then do a real small hole right where you think the key is, through both sides and then you can actually see the daylight through there as we lift it and we're bang on. So then I can drill my regular hole to the, the key itself. So just got to finally fit the bars just to keep with the uh, design on the other window and also stop people walking into the glass. I quite like the look of it, just trying to keep it looking a little bit old English barn style. Okay, so door's nearly done. I'm on the home straight. I'm just lining the old uh, stable liner there. Now I did, didn't did want to do a solid oak frame 
uh, rather a liner like that, just so that I can make a maximum door width, because the bigger the door, the better really for bringing stuff in and out. So I've literally lined the original timber frame here, and then I'm just gonna put these face plates on and then trim it out with a door stop right across. So I thought it'd be nice to have a little bit of resin on the entrance to the resin shop. So here's some oak, I'll put some resin in. So I've got a little rebate there just to catch the water drips and I've chamfered it down on the planer to give it an angle. Almost there, just got to fill in the step with some cement and then I can put the door trim on. furniture just uh, basic the house and all the other main doors have a doorknob so I thought I'd just try and tie it in okay so the door is finished the one thing I forgot was to put a little ledge on here just to stop the drips going down through this side if we get driving rain so that's a bit annoying because it's going to be difficult to get clamps on that side now it is really annoying so it'd be so easy to do on the bench Anyway, let's get on with that. I'm going to cut a 15 degree angle. Just when the door shuts, you're going to see it won't hit on the door frame. And also just going to add a little tiny angle, what's this, 5% uh, just to kick the water forward again. 